Başka muhtemelen gelen olmayacak değil mi? Büyük ihtimalle. Yoksa... Herhalde olmaz. Yok, biz... Bu kadar Arada, şimdi konsantrasyonun bozulmasın diye söyleyeyim. Arada fotoğrafçı gelecek. Burada ayrı fotoğrafçı arkadaş. Ben dedim, biz herhalde 15 dakika falan geç başladı. Siz boşuna beklemeyin dedim. Gelecek birkaç tane fotoğraf çekecek. Üniversite etkinliği olması dolayısıyla. Yani konsantrasyonu bozmasın diye. Şimdiden söyleyeyim. I think I have 30 minutes, right? At most. Okay, thank you for having me and giving this opportunity to present my work today. Uh, so I will present this paper, which is, you know, happens to be my uh, part of my dissertation, based on my dissertation. It might be a bit scary at first glance, but hopefully after 30 minutes, you know, I believe you'll get, you know, important insights about this topic. So, <clears throat> why do I come up with this idea? How shopping cost effect is incentives? I was not particularly interested in this, you know, bundling issues, but my supervisor, uh, David Sibley, was, or is a very influential person in antitrust circles, so he advised the US government uh, in Microsoft cases, you might be familiar, Microsoft was accused by monopolizing the grocery market by bundling its Windows 98 uh, you know, operating system with the uh, Internet Explorer. So he worked on that case and he also was a chief economist at the Antitrust Division of the Department of Justice. So he was very you know, involved with this bundling issues. He was like fixated about this. So I need to convince him that you know, the topic that I'm going to work and so it's worthwhile for him to uh, advice my dissertation. So I dive into the bundling literature and come up with this idea and he finds out, you know, found out this were interesting. Uh, he liked the idea, he encouraged me all along. So essentially this uh, paper uh, tried to contribute to the bundling literature. Now, 
Bundling simply uh, is, we know, like selling two products or more products together. It's a business strategy. It's a very uh, prevalent business strategy in modern economies, from computers to stereo system to vacation packages. We see everywhere in our daily life. Now, why these firms offer bundling, bundling or that, why do they bundle their products? Uh, in general, there are two main reasons. Supply side factors and demand side factors play an important role in bundling decisions. For example, it might be cheaper for a firm to bundle two products rather than, the, rather than sell them separately. Car manufacturers assemble components of a car much more efficiently than customers. Uh, also, consumers might value the bundle more than they value individual products. So, for instance, in the computer industry, software packages are meaningless without you know, hardware on which to be installed. But in some markets, it's not so clear why we observe bundling. So I focus on those markets where we, uh, you know, firms offer these or bundle their products, but they are not, there is no like demand side or supply side factors. The products they sell essentially are uh, independent or uh, they are just, you know, they are not substitutable. So the earliest examples of the motivating example are the reward points offered by credit card companies like Visa. So these reward points can be redeemed as discounts or free offers from particular airlines or you know, hotel chains, car rental companies. Uh, the closest example, the motivating example, is the supermarket chains. In various parts of the world, uh, US, in UK, France, Australia, and other parts, we observe that you know, supermarket chains have offered their grocery customers these bundling discounts when they, uh, that these discounts can be redeemed when they purchase gasoline from specific gasoline retailers. So examples are like Albertson and Arco in the US, Handy Foods team up with Purchase Marathon. We have Walmart successfully employed a strategy. In Australia, we have Coles, Shell, Woolworths, and Caltex. They you know, together bundle their you know, products uh, to encourage customer loyalty. Now, the idea is how they can encourage this customer loyalty. Now, there are certain features of these discounts, but how these bundling discounts work? Suppose in Australia, you're a customer, you go to this calls, and if you purchase groceries above a threshold, in that case, $30, threshold, then you're entitled to receive this fixed discount, uh, which turns out to be four cents per liter uh, for each gasoline liter that you can purchase if you go to Shell gasoline station. Now, there are certain features of these discounts. We observe that these bundling arrangements involve exclusive brand-specific relationship uh, for unrelated products. So if you go to Coles and you got the discounts, you can only redeem at this Shell station. You cannot redeem it at any arbitrary station which you find convenient. So there is this exclusivity relationship. And also discount fixed dollar for one of the products. So these you know, firms, when they get together, they determine fixed discounts no matter what happens in the economy. Somehow they commit themselves to these discounts. So, so discounts remain constant for months. But we know that interest rate, gasoline prices, and grocery prices change over time. But it turns out that these guys commit. So for those of you who are familiar with game theory, it means that if they commit themselves before price competition takes place, this is like an additional stage. In bundling literature, usually uh, these models, bundling and standalone <coughs> price competition, they simultaneously determine this discounts and standalone like grocery, in that particular case, grocery and uh, this gasoline prices. But in this particular arrangement, we have prior to standalone or price competition, they, before that stage, they determine, set their discounts. Now, third important feature of these discounts, we observe that arrangements, not only by non-merge or unintegrated companies like Albertson and Arco, but as an example for the merch firm, Walmart successfully employed a strategy. Now, they offer these discounts if you purchase gasoline from their parking lots. So that's why I'm going to focus on both, you know, 
also the merger incentives of these you know, companies. Now, why shopping costs? In order to purchase a product, as we know that consumers visit the store, you know, search for the product, wait in line, etc. So you spend time, energy on you know purchasing these items. Not only you pay like the monetary payment for your purchase, but also you incur this additional cost. So in marketing literature, there are numerous studies on shopping costs, how shopping costs play a significant role in customers' purchase and decision in retail markets. So that's why I wanted to uh, use this shopping cost idea in marketing literature to economics, where we don't observe, usually economics don't take this into account, except there is one study which I will talk about in literature review. When firms offer these bundling discounts, if you, you know, carefully look at this discount, they essentially give consumers an endogenous discount in these shopping costs. So, then it will be interesting if consumers have exogenous shopping costs, how will these incentives really change when they offer discounts or when it comes to merge or not merge? So that's the idea, that's the question, main question that I'm talking about. So all outline of the literature, I mean, the talk as follows. So we have, I'm done with the introduction. Next, I'm going to briefly talk about the literature and specify the model. And essentially what I do, I saw three-stage complete information game. So these are the sub-games of the whole game, okay? In this case, I'm going to allow these pairs like Arco, Albers, and Arco, they stay independent, but try to offer these discounts to encourage customer loyalty. And then I'm going to allow one party to merge, and then both parties to merge to study the merger incentives, and then I'm going to solve the whole game and talk about the welfare consequences of different market settings uh, for these bundling discounts, and finally I will conclude with final remarks. Okay, uh, there are, we have like monopoly settings and oligopoly settings in the literature. There are classical papers, Adams and Nell in 1976 and McAfee, McMillan, Winston, 1989. Uh, they show how bundling is profitable as a price discrimination tool for these monopolies. These are very classical results, but recently uh, there is a surge in interest in academia to understand these bundling issues in oligopoly settings. Matitas and Rejibao, they focus on a duopoly in a standard hoteling model and show that bundling discounts are not profitable with full market coverage. Their concern is compatibility. Whether, you know, products like computer is compatible with printer or monitor, etc. But they don't, you know, discuss the bundling issues. But that's a very important framework after which, you know, this bundling literature really flourish. So nail buff, especially they try to understand this Microsoft case where how Microsoft used bundling to deter entry in the browser market. So they definitely has a different market setting than mine. So they uh, see the relationship between bundling and entry deterrence. Now the first paper, 2006, Armstrong and Wickers, this is the first time in economics literature, specifically in IO, industrial organization literature, we observe, I mean, the first time shopping costs is mentioned in the literature. So they focus on duopoly, like two merged firms, they offer these discounts. And they compare linear pricing, like unit pricing with bundling. They, under different economic factors, like demand heterogeneity, consumer heterogeneity, elasticity, and so on. So one factor is just shopping costs. It turns out that under shopping costs, bundling to raise profits, but are consumer surplus. So they don't explore deeply this shopping cost issue. And besides, they just focus on duopoly. Like there are two firms in the market, whereas in my case, I model like two pairs of firms. So there are four firms. And also in that particular paper, they model these pricing decisions. These guys simultaneously determine their standalone prices and discount, discounts, okay? Whereas in my paper, there is an extra additional stage which changed the pricing dynamics. So the closest paper to mine in the literature is this Gantz and King paper. They focus on four firms. And they demonstrate that these two pairs of firms, they merge in equilibrium but do not offer any discount. Uh, that's the result. 
and consumers do not have shopping costs in that particular paper as well, so they then address the shopping cost issue. When we introduce shopping costs, this result completely changed. In equilibrium, it turns out that firms stay away from the merger strategy, they stay independent, but offer bundling discounts, and bundling discounts turn out to be really terrible, uh, you know, business strategy for consumers. I'm going to show you how consumer welfare is adversely affected with this strategy. Okay. Now, the model, it might be a bit, you know, uh, you might not be familiar with this, you know, the hoteling framework. So, I use two dimensional st standard hoteling framework. So, there are four firms. This picture here depicts both location of consumers, like X, for example, there is a consumer here which represents your preferences in the product space, but also location of firms. So there are four firms, X1 here, X2 here, which produces product X. X you can think of as like grocery. There are Y1 and Y2, which produce product Y, which is gasoline in this case. And there are consumers in between. I assume they are maximally differentiated. And so X1, Y1, you can, it's possible to think these pairs like they are located in this strip mall. There are X1, Y1 here, X2, Y2 here, okay? Production for simplicity is assumed to be costless. So marginal costs, fixed costs are zero in the model. And <clears throat> when these pairs, they offer bundling discounts, they offer this by joint, okay? What about consumers? So consumers choose to consume one unit of X or one unit of Y, both products, X and Y, or neither product, depending on their prices and depending on their preferences or their location in the product space. Uh, so for X, for example, suppose this guy, the utility is derived, I'm gonna talk about this now, if they go to, for example, this guy goes to firm X1, they derive utility from consumption, which is UX, from gross utility, incur the cost PX1, the payment to the firm, but also this TX. Now, T is the transport cost, or in what we say is the mismatch or brand preference parameter. So, the more transport cost or mismatch cost, the more his location away from the uh, product, you know, purchase product. So if X is here, if X is zero, then he doesn't incur any mismatch cost because he got the ideal product, okay? Similarly, if this guy goes to firm X2, they are gonna incur this cost, UX, the gross utility, minus PX2, minus this T, which is my one minus X in this case, okay? Yes. Are these distances uh, in terms of the qualities of the product or is it physical geographical distance? Uh, both of them. As long as physical geographical distance, I mean, I synonymously use both. both. But in theory, we say they are, you know, product, just, you know, they have different preferences. But in this particular bundling arrangements, you can think of different locations, like physical location mm -hmm. as well. So the, the utility structure, I allow that this UX and UA, UI gross utility, which is larger than 2D. So these are very large so that in equilibrium, consumption takes place among these four product combinations, okay? So there is no zero consumption and have inelastic demands this one. If consumer goes to this X1, Y1, that location, they're gonna get utility UX plus UY gross utility minus the payments, minus these mismatch costs, but they will entitle to receive this discount, okay? Because bundled pair, which are the natural partners, like they're on the same small, they offer this discount. Similarly, if they go to X2Y to this strip mall, they got this utility, they pay these prices and incur these mismatch costs, but they will get the discount, okay? If they, so these are like one-stop shoppers, okay? They just go one strip mall, another strip mall. 
However, if they make two stop shopping, they go to X1 to purchase X, they go to y, Y2 to purchase Y. So this is like two stop shoppers. In that case, they incur this utility minus payment minus this cost, but also they incur additional shopping costs because they are making two stop shopping. Okay, and obviously they don't receive any discount in this particular case. Okay, that's the utility, and this is going to derive all the results in that paper. So I assume that shopping cost is less than T. Preference and production are obviously independent in the model, and this I look for bundling discounts which is less than T minus S, so small discounts. Any question about the model? Is it okay? So I, as I said, I am solving three-dimensional hoteling frame. I mean, three-stage complete information game where in the first stage, in the merger stage, these pairs X1, Y1, X2, Y2, they simultaneously choose to merge or not merge. After they stage, given that where they're on the game tree, they set their bundling discount jointly, and then after which stand-alone price competition takes place. Okay? So there are sub-games here, as you see. First, I'm going to focus on this sub-game, where both players stay independent, but when it comes to offering these bundling discounts, they jointly offer. That's the equilibrium outcome I'm going to show. And then I will talk about the one merger case. I will allow only X1, Y1 merge, or one of the parties merge. And then lastly, I'm going to focus on two merger cases where both parties can merge and how outcomes will differ. So since this is a dynamic game, the solution concept is this sub-game perfect Nash equilibrium. So, I come up with this equilibrium or characterized sub game perfect Nash equilibrium as a function of shopping cost. So, these are the equilibrium strategies of firm X1, Y1. That's the equilibrium strategy for X2, Y2. It turns out that except for very small values of shopping cost, which turns out 0 0.02, these pairs merge but do not offer discounts. But otherwise, Otherwise, we observe this non-merger strategy. So they stay independent, but offer these discounts in equilibrium. That's the conclusion what I'm going to come up with. Okay. So let's go over this benchmark case, hoteling benchmark, where there is no shopping cost, no bundling discounts, and we have this uh, independent X and Y. So. <clears throat> How consumers choose their locations or their products? There are like marginal consumers here. For example, consumers to the left of A purchase from X1 because they incur less mismatch parameter, mismatch cost. To the right of A goes to X2. So that's why that's how I compute the demand function. Firms maximize their profit using their revenue. Remember, there is no cost production cost, price times revenue quantity, which is revenue. Similarly, PX2 uh, is determined to maximize this profit function. So this is like two equations, two unknown. You can easily solve that price is equal to T, where T is assumed to be 1 for simplicity, but the qualitative results do not change for the other values of T. Price is 1, and these firms share the market equally, and profit turns out to be 1 half or T over 2. This is the benchmark case, hotel, standard hoteling result. So if we <clears throat> note that demand for product X1 depends on price, own price, and rival's price. But if we introduce shopping costs, now there is no shopping cost here, no bundling discounts. Suppose consumers face shopping costs. Now, what will happen if consumers have shopping costs? We will expect that they will tend to make more one-stop shopping, okay? So these are two-stop shoppers. We will expect that their areas will shrink in size, okay? In other words, these marginal consumers shift to the right or to the up so that we have more one-stop shoppers at the expense of these two-stop shoppers. Now, once we have this, plug in that stru situation, it turns out that demand structure changes as a result. Okay? 
Now, QX1 depends not only its own price and rival's price, but also on the prices of the unrelated product. Remember, X and Y, they are unrelated, but demand for X1 depends on price of product Y. Similarly, we have the same situation. So that's why, that's why shopping costs change the nature of price discrimination, okay? Now note that here QX1 does not depend on Y, but when we introduce shopping cost, we have Y here. But in equilibrium, when we solve the model, prices, profits, and so on, they are the same as before. In equilibrium, we don't have any change in results. So, <clears throat> but when these pairs are allowed to offer their discounts, things will change. Okay. Now, before I go on to this cooperative case, which is the main case here, I first look at if these pairs are non-cooperatively offer these discounts, okay? So firm X1, independent from Y1, X2, and Y2, they just offer discount and customers get the discount to redeem at Y1. Y1 does the same. If they play this game, it turns out that no bundling is offered in equilibrium. So bundling can be thought of, or bundling discount can be thought of as a public good. From a single firm's perspective, it's a very costly endeavor. They don't want to do it alone. But still they want to offer the discounts to attract you know, these customers, to encourage customer loyalty. So there is a public good aspect. Remember, like you want to build the bridge, everybody benefit from building the bridge like public good, but you don't want to pay it alone, right? So similar argument works here, but we will see that natural partners, X11, Y1, X2, Y2, they have incentive to offer these discounts. So when I allow X1, Y1, suppose in this case there is one bundling discount, DV is offered, but D2 is equal to zero. So X1, Y1, these guys can extract consumers from three segments. So by offering bundling discounts, they extend their territory. They got customers from this, northwest, southeast, and also boundaries of the other, you know, strip mall. So from all these three segments, when we using this marginal consumer locations change, as a result, we have this demand structure. Now note that QX1, demand for product X sold by firm X1, Depends again not only the price on price but also price of Y1. Now, given PY2, if you increase PY1, QX1 falls down. Okay, so that's why firm X1 and Y1 will take this into account when they choose their price, you know, in the standalone price competition stage. Yeah, is the cooperative case the same as merging? No, they are not merged. That's a good question. They are still independent. I should have said that. They are independent, but when it comes to offering these bundling discounts, they get together cooperatively, join the set one discount. So they share the cost of the discount equally. Okay? It turns out that equal sharing is the optimum you know, sharing rule here. I calculate this. Now, I have to say this non-cooperative case when I sold this model, the profit function is 9 degree polynomial in discount. So if you have 9 degree polynomials, you cannot solve this. So uh, that's why I need to use a uh, Mathematica program for symbolic calculations, etc. to come up with this. Otherwise, this is a very challenging task to solve that problem. Uh, the simplest case, the, this one month in case is I spent, I remember, like start at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and I was very obstinate and it took like uh, next uh, 11 a.m. in the next day without no sleep and I spent like 35 pages and still I'm not sure whether I saw this correctly. So that's why I use, you know, Mathematica and uh, luckily, you know, I come up with these results. So it's a very daunting task when it uh, comes to, you know, calculating this equilibrium. So in equilibrium, we have 
X1, Y1 offer these discounts. We have a positive discount. The discount forces this unbalanced pair to respond aggressively. Since they cannot coordinate, you know, these guys can coordinate their decision because they share the discounts, but they can, these guys cannot coordinate their decision. So they end up charging higher prices. So they lose their strategic advantage then. So X1, Y1 gain from this, but shopping cost tends to offset this advantage. Why shopping cost tends to offset this advantage? When shopping cost goes up, these areas, these two stock shoppers, these areas shrink in size, okay? But the reason why X1, Y1 would like to offer these bundling discounts, especially to price discriminate among these consumers who have asymmetric preferences. But already when shopping cost goes up, we have smaller area, so there is nothing they can find to extract consumer surplus. So that's why as shopping cost goes up, we have smaller and smaller bundling discounts, which is profitable for these firms. So <clears throat> when we compare prices to the benchmark, I want to show you briefly because we are running out of time. So this X1, Y1, so there are many graphs here. PX1, PX2, QX1, QX2. So PX, Y1, this is the profit for the bundled pair. This is the profit for the unbundled pair, okay? Now, remember, profit is equal to one is the equilibrium profit level in the benchmark case. So firms offer bundling discounts, as you see that, because it's profitable to do so. They receive higher profits. Even though as shopping cost goes up, they lose their strategic advantage, but still they have an important weapon, let's say, to offer these discounts. Obviously, X2, Y2, these are unbundled pair, they are worse off, okay? Now, that's the reason we will expect that if X2, Y2 will have the chance, change to, chance to offer these discounts, they're gonna do so. By countering offering X now, I allow both pairs to offer discounts. By counter offering D2, X2 and Y2, will extend their territory at the expense of X1 and Y1, okay? So they are really fighting really hard to get these consumers. In equilibrium, so they offer discounts as high as possible, so in the end, everybody becomes one-stop shopper. We don't have to stop shopper in equilibrium. So we have in equilibrium, the consumer locations becomes like this. Everybody goes to this one strip mall or another strip mall. So, <clears throat> equilibrium values of industry variables do not depend on shopping costs in this case, but consumers are really worse off. Why they are worse off? Just think about this guy who is located here. They go to X1 because that's the closest location, but they go to Y1 as well. If there is no discount, this guy would like to go to Y2 because it's closest to Y2's shop. But because of the high discounts, they end up going to a store which they do not prefer, okay? So that's why social welfare is terribly, adversely, negatively affected by this two bombing discount case. So, but firms obviously have strong incentive to offer bundling discounts because it's a very strong, important strategic tool. Now, one thing to note is that in this particular case, it turns out that, remember, price is equal to 1 in the benchmark case, but now price is equal to 1.5, which is 50% higher. So we have very strong externality in the environment, and prices turn out, turn out to be inefficiently high. When we have externality and prices high, then uh, we will plausibly think that if these guys are allowed to internalize externality, things will change. So internalizing means they are merging. Now I allow these guys to merge. It turns out that, suppose in this case, X1, Y1 merge, but X2, Y2 stay independent. And if, when I sold the model, it turns in equilibrium, non-merge firms do not offer any bundling discount. So D2 is zero in this case. Why D2 is zero? Because an increase in D2, if X2, Y2 increase their discounts, then merge firms, since they can coordinate their prices, 
they can be more aggressive. So merger is like a nuclear weapon. So they have not only determined their <coughs> bundling discounts, but also standalone prices. So they can coordinate their prices, they can become really aggressive if another guy starts to sparkle any fights between the two. Okay? And in equilibrium, merge firms offer these discounts, which is 2.5, and one merger intensifies competition in this case. Now, X1, Y1, so this represents the merger's firm's profit. It's still much higher than non-merger guys. But industry profit, because of competition, as shopping costs goes up, they fall significantly as a result. <clears throat> okay. Any question or can you follow, guys? Is it <laughs> now I'm going to allow two mergers. So I have like two slides, three slides to go. I'm almost done. If we allow two mergers, then as we expect, both guys have nuclear weapons. And both guys can determine their standalone price and bundling discounts cooperatively. So competition will be tougher or is the toughest case in that particular bonding arrangement because both peers can coordinate their pricing decisions. Now, one thing to note is that I didn't post the demand structure, but one measure, one proxy to measure the interdependence between product X2 and Y2 is that following T. So they merge, but they do not offer bundling discounts. To understand the intuition behind that, suppose X1, Y1 offer discounts, D1. If D1 is offered, if you look at demand structure of X2 and Y2, to see the interdependence, it's going to be like this, the partial derivative, which depends on D1. So when as D1 goes up, the interdependence between X2 and Y2 also increases. So that's why X2, Y2 becomes really aggressive in that case. So they're going to lower, much lower their prices. So, and which in turn lower profits both X1 and Y1, but also X2 and Y2. So that's, that's the reason why D1 should be zero in that particular case, because already they have a huge competition. If D1 becomes positive, then we have the worst case scenario for the firms. So profit becomes less and less. As you see that one is the level where we have the benchmark, but it goes down to almost 0 0.5. So profits are terribly affected, but also to see the effect of competition, price level goes from one to 0 0.5. So significantly falls for each values of shopping costs because of the competition. So they merge, but they cannot offer bundling discounts because of the high competition in this case. Okay, now if you solve that, the whole sub games, which is another challenging task, and I come up with this, except for very small values of shopping costs, which is 0 0.2, for most of the values of shopping costs, which we observe in market settings or in real life, we observe that these pairs do not merge but offer these bundling discounts, okay? So let me, uh, before I conclude, I want to compare welfare, these different market settings in terms of social welfare. Uh, social welfare is, you know, producer plus consumer welfare. So which one yields the highest one? The dash one represents the two merger case, the green dash one, two merger. Tick one, I mean the red one is the one merger case. This is the two bundling discount case, and we have one bundling discounts which are represented by the tick one. Okay. So if you look at for most, you know, we have shopping costs, which is three, three different cases. For most values of shopping costs, two merger case yields the highest social welfare. The worst case scenario is the one merger case for society. And two bonding, one bonding discounts, it lies in the middle. But more importantly, if you look at the consumer welfare, which is the uh, important, the most important uh, measure to understand whether antitrust authority should block or avoid a typical business strategy, uh, we just look at the consumer welfare. 
Now, consumers are very happy with the two merger case, as you see here. Because competition is tough, prices are low, profits are low, so they are the happiest uh, in that particular scenario. Remember, this is a true bundling discount case. They are independent, but offer this discount. So this is the case where all, for all these shopping costs, they just get the lowest consumer wealthy. So they are terribly sad in that particular case. Remember, two bundling discount is the market outcome, equilibrium outcome of this model. So <clears throat> bundling discounts seem to be Sounds like a good idea, you know, you're offering customers discounts, which is fine, and so consumers should be happy with it. But it turns out that these pairs, they increase their discounts, but after the second stage, when they determine their standalone prices, they increase them to the level where they undo these discounts, okay? So that net benefit for consumers are not that good. And it turns out that they are really worse off with this bundling discount strategy. So bottom line, antitrust authorities should be suspicious about these bundling discounts since standalone prices adjust and consumers are worse off as a result. Okay, that's the, that's the conclusion. And I want to thank you for listening. So if you have any question, I will be happy to address them.
Ama şey yani, industrial organization daha çok. Tabii tabii. Industrial organization konusu ama çok haklısınız. Normalde yani marketingçiler daha fazla ilgi gösteriyor bu konuya. E ben de... Aslında Ayo herhalde ekonominin en şey böyle uygulaması kolay olan alanı Ayo olabilir. Ya uygulamasında hani firmalarla birebir yani firma stratejileriyle evet. direkt zaten Ayo topya. Başka sorular var mı? Teşekkürler. Ben teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederiz. Sağ olun.